There's a lot of different events that made me who I am today, but I found that people love when I'm true to who I am and when I'm doing me, whatever it is. Some of the moments stick with me more than others, and they help me to become who I am today, musically and professionally and just personally. Lay back. Snoop Dogg grew up on the rough side of Long Beach, California. He was born Calvin Cotazar Brodus, but nobody ever called him that. I never heard my mother call me by my real name my entire life. I've always heard Snoopy. That's been my name. When Snoop was a boy, Friday nights meant dancing in the living room with his mother to soul and R&B records. Those sounds would forever influence his music. We would do that every Friday. We liked the stylistics, the shy lights, temptations. So my mom started paying for him to go piano lessons, which he'd go every Saturday. Music was a big part of Snoop's upbringing, not just at home, but at church as well. Psh, man, I was singing in church ever since I could remember. But that was something that was mandatory, like in my house. Like a lot of kids in the neighborhood, Snoop split his time between the church in the streets. I knew that he loved to sing, but he just started getting into other things and drifted away from the church. It was cooler on the streets than it was to go to church. He wasn't looked at as cool for going to church. So when we started straying away from the church to go to the streets, they started going to jail, started getting shot at. It's like, damn, maybe they wasn't lying in church. When Snoop was growing up, the music of the streets was rap, and the stories were being told by groups like N.W.A. Records symbolize where we came from. The music was becoming something that the kids could do. Snoop discovered his own talent for rapping in school. At school, I felt like a superstar. If I would start rapping in the hallway, it would be two, three hundred students in a circle. My rapping was giving me an opportunity to be somebody different. School is also where he met two of his best friends and future collaborators, Nate Dogg and Warren G. I met Snoop maybe seven, eight years old. We both went to the same elementary school. As we got a little older, music was like something that we wanted to do. So Warren G and I were sort of kind of like DJ and MC. Then once I went to Long Beach Poly High School. That's where I met Nate Dog. After high school, Snoop was gangbanging and dealing drugs to make a living, but he was still holding on to his dream of becoming a rapper. So he, Warren, and Nate teamed up to form their own rap group. It was the moment that Snoop started taking his music seriously. Snoop was like, well, won't. Well, we all come together and just start making some music. We created 213 and started making mixtapes. We would battle anybody, anywhere. Snoop would be the main guy battling everybody, killing them. He'd break whatever I point to down. That's how dope he was. You know, it was a transformation from being a drug dealer and a gangbanger to a rapper. I could always rhyme and put words together, but to actually put it on cassette and get the response from people, that was the initial push that drove me away from selling drugs and gangbanging. With 213, Snoop realized that rapping really could be his ticket off the streets. But he knew that if he was going to get away from drug dealing, he would have to work at it. So he got into a different kind of hustling. We just put it on cassette tape, sold it for $5, or either gave them away. It was word of mouth back then. You have to go around door to door and sell your product. While 213 was getting love on the streets, they were only getting rejection from the record labels. Snoop started giving up. One day he went out, threw his book in the trash, his notebook with all his rhymes and stuff, and I pulled it out the trash, and I was like, nah, we're gonna keep working at this. Warren had one big idea and one big connection left when he slipped a 213 mixtape into the stereo at a party while hanging out with his stepbrother. This is my, this is my little brother right What's here. Up, bro? <laughs> that stepbrother was none other than hip-hop power player Dr. Dre, member of rap supergroup N.W.A. and co-founder of Death Row Records. It would turn out to be the most important tape 213 would ever make and the first big turning point in Snoop's career. Buddy is having a bachelor party. They was playing music, 
and the cassette had stopped. Warren G threw in our cassette. One of my songs came on. Drake came over and he listened. He was like, this y'all? I was like, yeah, this is us. He was like, this is dope. Snoop's freestyle blew Dr. Dre away, and he told Snoop to show up at Death Row Records the next morning at 8 a.m. It's the moment a legendary partnership was born. And he left me with a beat, and he was like, we got to write a song for a movie. It's about an undercover police officer. That's all he said. I'm like, damn, I went to jail for selling dope to an undercover police officer. And I just wrote the whole song from there. Deep cover was a hit right out of the gate. And that was just the start. Snoop's next collaboration with Dr. Dre would show the world he meant business. Dre's debut solo album, The Chronic, featuring a Grammy-nominated single, Nothing But a G Thing. In the beginning, working with Dr. Dre, it was like working with somebody that was great, but you knew that they wasn't finished with their greatness, and you were going to be a part of it. The Chronic still stands as a hip-hop masterpiece, and even though it was Dre's debut, it was Snoop's breakout moment. I developed a different style of rap. It's so relevant because it was just everyday life, and it was me being able to pin it and to write it and be the voice of the people, creating the g phone. I can't even sit here and give Snoop all the props he deserves. I don't know. You know, if Dr. Dre would be as popular as he is without Snoop Dogg. He was a hood superhero. And for a hood superhero to bless me before I was even heard and to put me in the studio with him, that right there is like a dream come true because I just knew that once I got with him that he could really bring the best out of me. Coming up, Snoop's debut album makes history and goes mainstream thanks to a music icon. He came and shook my hand and met me and told me he loved my music. Then he faces one of his darkest moments when he goes on trial for murder. He asked me, Mom, I want you to be there every day because, you know, I'm really weak now. And the gangster lifestyle claims his best friend. And later, Snoop reveals the one moment that made him a hip-hop icon. This is Snoop Dogg, The Ride.